Hi everybody, this is Ron Hatton, Gadget Man, and what we're working on this morning is a 2006 Ford Escape. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to show you the basics of what a throttle body is, where it's located, and how you can remove yours before you send it to us. So, if we'll take a look here, this is your air filter box. I want to back up a little bit, Shields. Uh, this is your air filter box. Now, the air filter box is positioned in a lot of different ways, and, and every vehicle's got it in a different spot, pretty much. But that's your air filter. Here is a device that's known as the, man, uh, the mass airflow sensor. Uh, various names, but they all indicate that they're they're moving the airflow or registering the airflow. Uh, and here is the the crankcase ventilation tube, one of the two. All right, this is the one we're going to leave alone. And then here is the throttle body right here. Now, as you can see, uh, back up just a little bit, Shells. All right, these the four bolts in here. Okay, these there's four bolts that hold this particular throttle body on. Almost all of them have four bolts. Some have three, some have five, but most most of them have four bolts. Now over here is a sensor on the side. That's called the throttle position sensor. Because as the cable moves and opens the throttle, box, throttle up like this, there's a shaft that moves through, and th this is a resistor in here that sends a signal to the computer to let the computer know how far open the throttle is. Okay? This piece right here is called the idle air control valve, and what it does is when the engine is in an idle, it will allow air in through into the uh, into the intake air stream to keep the thing idling. Um, this right over here is your EGR. Now you can tell it's the EGR because it's the stands for exhaust gas recirculation, and this metal tube goes down to the exhaust and comes up through this valve and then the valve opens and closes according to the vacuum inside the engine and lets it into the intake manifold here. Okay, So that's basically what we're dealing with and uh, now let me get some tools and let me get some tools. <laughs> we're, we're just looking at the youth work of the team on this camera and stuff guys. Uh, it's fun. All right, anyway, so we'll get some tools down here and uh, we'll get, get started on this. All right. So what I've done is, as you can see, this, there's not much to this. I've just loosened up a couple of screws, and I'm gonna pop this loose. Now, this this really important that you handle these electrical connectors with care. All right, because you don't want to pull on the wires. If you do, then you may render the unit non-functional, and that's not a good thing. But on this particular type, simply push down on the clip and wiggle it, and it slides right off. The same thing with the throttle position sensor. It's a little lever you can push. You probably can't see it from there, but you just push it on just pull the clip off. Some of them have a little retainer that that is a different color, and then you slide that retainer up and then push on it, and it'll open up. It's just a security measure. All right? Now, you don't have to remove the air filter box in this case. Sometimes you do, but not in this case. So what we're going to do is we're going to just pull these things out of here. Ugh. There, so we don't damage anything. And then we pull it loose. We just remove that section from there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take and remove the throttle body bolts. Oh, here. Well, let's do the cables first. This type of cabling, you just push it down and it pops right off. This is how it goes on, just like this. It snaps into place. So you just work it off. Be careful with it. Push it straight away only. Then, uh, Shields, would you come around the other side and show them how this cable goes in now? Now, on this cable here, they're all set up basically the same way. They have a little ball that, that goes like this, and you just slide it. There's a hole down there. I'll show you better when we get the throttle body off. But there's a hole right there that this slides into, like that. And you just pull the cable up where you can get that loose, and it slides right in. Hopefully, hopefully you can see that. But if not, you can figure that out. It's not really tough. So let me get an extension here. There's the the target. That's how I lost my extension with my socket on it, I think. You guys keep an eye on your tools. Try to set them down someplace safe, because tell you what, not, it's very rare for me to be able to 
work on a car. At least I, I lose tools on about every tenth car, and that gets expensive to replace. So. Because of what we do, well, since I take the five gas analysis, the five gas samplings on these vehicles, when they come to me, I expect them to be hot, and I jump right on them so I can get accurate emissions analysis of the engine while it's warmed up so we don't have to wait until the cat heats up. No, it's not too. It's too. I like converter. Yeah, the catalytic converter, right. Which has to be hot in order to burn the quote unquote waste fuel, which is what we're trying to eliminate is the waste fuel. Actually, it doesn't change much except the the length of time it takes to burn your fuel, which makes a huge difference in your economy. Huge differences. All right, so here we go. Got the last bolt off. And there may be a vacuum line on it. it. Feels like there might be. Oh, and there's coolant lines. Okay, so coolant lines are attached to the throttle body. So what we're going to do is we're going to bleed off some of the pressure. If you look over here, you see the pressure cap on the radiator. Now, because the engine's hot, I don't want that to spray liquid all over me, so I just loosen it up and let the air out. Uh, that prevents it from squirting. Yeah, we don't need it squirting on us. Not today. All right, so now I'm going to take and remove... Remove the coolant lines. Hopefully, it won't leak too bad. Get back to it. These are just simple squeeze clamps. I'm sure most all of you have seen them before. You just take the clamp, loosen it, get them right to it. And there's the vacuum line that I plugged in this vehicle originally that uh, caused it to uh, spit out uh, transmission fluid. I almost lost his tranny because I thought it was a vacuum line, but it's not. It's a vent. Now notice I just took that and I worked the hose back and forth a little bit. That's to break the seal loose. Because otherwise when you go to pull on it, you're liable to break up, put a hole in it. We don't want to do that. Oh, there we go. Got a little bit of leak there. Take care of that very quickly. Let me do that with this right here. There we go. Takes care of that. Nope, now it's coming out from the other side. So we have to get the other hose off of there. Uh, that's just, I'm going to hold that up there for the moment. It'll keep, it's just gravity that's allowing the cooling out. So I'm going to get another one of those magic little tools. Huh, excuse me. Pull that line off. Bang. And there. That'll prevent excess coolant loss forward there. There you go. Alright, so now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be, I've already grooved this once. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be cutting another groove to make sure that it's shaped correctly. Yeah, and with the larger bits. And it looks like, yeah, it, it could have been a lot better than it is. So we're going to get this squared away, then we're going to come back and do the installation. It's just the reverse of removal.